up everybody it's your girl bonnie scotch thank you so much for tuning into my video today i wanted to bring you a review for real housewives of new york this is season one episode two all right so before we get into this review go ahead and hit the like button for me when you hit the like button not only is it a free way to support my channel but it also lets youtube know that i'm here and that you all are rocking with my commentary so youtube starts to shoot my content out to other viewers just like you an audience who ordinarily would not get an opportunity to you know encounter my channel so that being said let's go ahead and jump right into it it wasn't a whole lot going on with this episode but um it, we do have a few things that we'll definitely discuss here all right so we started this episode with Erin meeting her mom at a wig shop now we learned that you know Erin's mom is battling cancer and rest in peace to Erin's dad who we learn he passed away on the premiere night just last week so I know that Erin is going through it right now so my heart really goes out to her at this time but apparently Erin cut her hair in solidarity with her mom and she's like oh I'm wearing wigs now it's like I don't know it was kind of weird because it's like you just got a trim it's not like you did a big chop or anything like that it's not like you know you have a pixie cut or anything super drastic I don't know I just thought that was kind of strange Uba comes to meet up with Erin at the wig shop Uba and Erin are having this conversation about how things have been weird with Jenna for the past six months because Bryn told Jenna basically that Erin called her broke and then we have Erin in the confessional revealing to us the audience that Jenna has been having money problems and that she confided in them all about this so I just find it odd that you are telling us about Jenna's money problems y'all have been having issues for the past six months do you think that this is gonna you know make things better between you all I don't know strange choice so Uba is asking Erin how are things with her and Abe and she immediately starts breaking down and crying um, I don't remember if I saw any actual tears in this scene but there's a later scene where Erin is crying and we'll talk about it when we get there anyway she starts crying about how she really wanted him to be there for her and how she wasn't able to lean on him and that he betrayed her so I'm thinking okay what could this betrayal be you know um is there some cheating going on like what what has held a back from being there for his wife at a time where she just found out that her mom has cancer it's kind of strange we have another scene where Sai and jenna are meeting up for lunch they're talking about their children going off to high school Sai is telling jenna that she really enjoys her company and she enjoys having this conversation with her it's coming off a little bit force, especially after we learned that you've been running around telling all kinds of people that you can't stand Jenna. Now all of a sudden it's like, oh, I really love having conversation with you. I love spending time with you. Sai has a really disingenuous energy in this moment. And then Sai brings up how bothered she is that Bryn went and told Jenna this information and then once again we have Jenna reminding Sai hey um Bryn is not the only person who shared that you can't stand me and I really love that Jenna is keeping it straight with Sai in this moment because it's like you wanted to run around and tell anybody who would listen that you hate my guts so don't make it an issue about oh Bryn came to tell you this and she likes to do all of these things it's like no it's your mouth that gets you in trouble and the same time you know Bryn went and announced that Uba has a boyfriend she would not have had that information to weaponize if you had not told her Sai Sai you got a big ass mouth and you need to own that period full stop Bryn has apparently been avoiding Sai Sai invited her over for Thanksgiving because she knows she has a hard time around the holidays she tried to reach out and apologize and Brynn is pretty much ignoring her. Sai wants everyone to prioritize her feelings. And she's like, well, you know, I never really express my feelings. So the fact that I'm expressing that I'm hurt, you all should be prioritizing my feelings. You express your feelings all the time. 
You like to get loud. You like to get excited. You like to go into all of these histrionics. If people are not responding or reacting in a way that you deem worthy or, you know, fit to the situation, you start going off. You start flying off at the handle. You're very expressive, Sai. It's just that you don't know how to express the feelings that exist under anger and rage. There are a lot of feelings in between anger and rage, right? But you let yourself get to this place. You let yourself get to level 10 before you express, okay, I'm having a one, I'm having a two, I'm having a four. What's at four? What's sitting at four for you, Sai? Hurt is sitting at level four. Or maybe betrayal is sitting at level five, but you let it build up to rage and then you start going off on everybody. Everybody don't want to deal with that. Anyway, we are having a scene with Mel and Raquel. They are in the house with their two kids. There's not really a whole lot going on in this scene. The only thing I really want to say is like how wild genetics are. I mean, when you look at Raquel's kids, you got the boy, the son who is clearly a black child. He looks like a black child. And then you got the daughter who's racially ambiguous. She's got red hair. She's got freckles. There was a clash for genetics between the white side and the black side. And the black side won with the boy and the white side won with the girl. Because I'm like, God damn. I mean, wow. In any case, um, we learned that Mel is a forensic neuropsychologist. And I said, Oh, there's money in this house. There is money in the house. Okay. Now, next scene, we have Erin meeting up at Bryn's house. Bryn has what looks like a fourth floor, five floor walk up. Okay. There should be an elevator. There should be an elevator. Okay. Listen, Bryn is playing an early 20s game. She is very much playing an early 20s game. I remember my second apartment that I had when I was living in Brooklyn. I had a fourth floor walk up in bed I used to live on Quincy. And when I tell you, oh, and I had a bike at that time. When I tell you my ass and my calves were sitting, sitting like no other time in my life. Okay, so after that, I, you know, told myself that I would never involve myself in a situation where I have a fourth floor walk up because I got to tell you, getting groceries, getting furniture up and down them steps was hell. Hell. Do you understand me? All right. In any case, we get into this conversation where Erin is basically saying to Bryn, I don't remember exactly what happened at the table. And I'm just apologizing. And Bryn is like, well, are you apologizing? Because when you apologize, you say you're sorry. You don't say that. I'm apologizing. And Bryn is like, well, you didn't defend me at the table when Sai jumped in. Bryn, you should have defended yourself. You should have defended yourself. You let Sai drag you in front of everybody at the table instead of handling her right then and there. See, for me, I would have given Sai the business at that table. Sai is the type of person that likes to get loud and then you got to show Sai, oh, I can get loud too. Or you can handle Sai in a way where you can make your anger very expensive. You let her yell and carry on and then you talk to her in a really calm voice and you say, well, whenever you're ready to stop yelling, then we can have a conversation. She starts going off, oh, you're a narcissist. I'd have been like, oh, is that a new word that you learned in therapy? Y'all don't be quick enough with the reads for me. Sai is the type of person that likes to get loud. She likes all of the histrionics and you gotta, you gotta bring it to her level. You gotta get loud with her or you gotta get real. I was going to say a word. C-U-N-T-Y. I don't want YouTube to demonetize my video though. Okay. But Bren, it's like, you can't expect Erin to jump in for you. You can't expect nobody to jump in for you. You gotta be able to jump in for yourself. You gotta be willing and able to handle up on behalf of yourself. This is Housewives, baby. This is Housewives. Hello? You know, Brynn really be tap dancing on my last nerve. 
because she's super passive aggressive. She likes to stoke all of these little fires. And then she's like, eh, why didn't you stick up for me? Like, girl, are you about that life or not? Stand up in your shit. Right? And then Sai reaches out to her. She wants to send this passive aggressive, oh, I'm odorless. And I'm, you know, da -da 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 -da. I'm like carbon monoxide. Like, girl, shut up. Like, you're so passive aggressive and weird and... I, I can't. I can't with Bryn for real. I don't even know how they can stomach her. I wouldn't have Bryn to do. Anyway, so Bryn and Erin get to resolving things. Erin starts breaking out into tears again. Tears, okay? Because I didn't see any tears on her face. She's just holding her head and she's like... <laughs> and I'm like, Erin. Erin, I need you to stop this. Just stop. Say, I'm going through a lot right now. I need you to be there for me. You don't have to pull out the fake tears. It's That was really wild and ridiculous to witness. But in any case, we have Aaron and Abe meeting up for lunch. So we learned that Abe sold their Bitcoin without telling Aaron. Apparently, he had sold it some years ago. And I do understand that this is very upsetting. Fucking up the church's money. That is very upsetting, especially if he pulled out the money prematurely. It's like, bruh, bruh, come on. But I still feel as though we're missing bits of the story because it can't be just that he pulled out the money years ago. It's like, all right, he pulled out the money, but you were also saying that you wanted him to support you emotionally right now while your mom is going through it. And I'm just like, it seems as though in the midst of a betrayal like this, Abe would lean in closer. Abe seems like a very emotionally attentive guy just based off of this conversation. So I feel like Erin is a bit of a control freak and she's telling us the story that she wants to tell us and she has Abe in alignment with that story. So the story that they're going along with for right now is that you took all the money out of Bitcoin prematurely and it was a betrayal. There's something else going on because why would Abe not be there for you emotionally? Because then we get into this conversation about how they didn't really know each other when they got married. That's another problem. Why y'all marrying people that y'all don't know? Why y'all even in relationships with people that y'all don't know? And this is a conversation that I see I'm going to have to have across the board on all of my shows that involve heterosexual relationships, there doesn't seem to be a vetting process when people get into these relationships. Where is the vetting process? Are you getting to know these people for real? So then we learned that Erin didn't really want to get married and that she was flying around on private jets with this and that person and she was living a certain kind of lifestyle. And this was something that Abe was insecure about in the beginning of the relationship because he's like, you know, I don't come from a trust fund family, but I lived comfor comfortably and I wanted to be able to provide this type of lifestyle for Erin. And Erin is like, yeah, you need to work harder. You need to step it up. Uba is in this store and Sai walks in. And I got to be honest with y'all, when Sai walked into the store, I didn't even recognize her. I was like, oh, who's this lady? For Sai to be a fashion influencer, I don't really know what's going on with this this look um, in this particular scene. The confessional look, you know, with the black thing on her head. I don't really understand what's going on with Sai this season. Um, in any case, we have Jessel, Bryn, and Rebecca Minkoff meeting up. They are taking this helicopter ride somewhere. I don't remember where they said they were going. They are having this conversation about Sai and Brent is like, well, I'm a party girl. You know, I don't want to just, you know, go back and forth with Sai. I just want to resolve things. And I don't understand why Sai is always screaming at me. This is New York City, not Rikers Island. Brent, I'm going to be honest with you. You sounded like a white woman. In this moment, you telling this joke to a white woman, Rebecca Minkoff, and then telling it to Jessel, who is not a white woman, but she exists outside of black culture. 
it's just very white womanish of you. It just seemed like a really weird microaggression. Something about that is just like, did anybody else get that feeling? I don't know. I, I just feel like it's something a white woman would say. Can I just say this also as a random sidebar? One person who shows up in the scene, who, who shows up in a way that they know that they are filming is that damn Jessel. She had on this fly ass, it was like a, a royal blue. It wasn't quite cobalt. It was like a deeper blue than cobalt, but it was beautiful. It was flowy, this flowy set. It, um, it had a long jacket. She had a crop top with it and some flowy pants. I said, Jessel, come through. A lot of people say that they don't like Jessel's fashions, but I like Jessel's fashions. Just will be having that shit on. Just will shows up like she knows she's filming. Hello? She gives us a little bit of drama. And I like that. Bryn, Rebecca, and Jess are on this helicopter. Bryn is asking Rebecca, you know, if we get questions about you involved in Scientology, how do you want us to proceed with this sister? And Rebecca is like, well, if people have questions, they can read a book. This is a religion that is recognized all over the world. Rebecca, sweetie, um, I don't know if you've heard, but Leah Remini came out with a whole entire series, a docu-series, documenting the crimes of the Church of Scientology. And then we have the women, weirdly, Jenna and Jessel, casualizing the Church of Scientology, we have Jessel talking about, oh, well, at least they have really pretty celebrities. And Jenna said something like, uh, there's an extreme version of every religion. No, every element of Scientology is extreme. Now, Jenna is right in that a lot of these churches, they have a, a cult-like um, type of energy, right? Based off some of the things that they're able to get people to do. I'm not going to get into like all the other religions, but we're specifically talking about Scientology and for y'all to just brush this off. I really appreciated Bryn's approach. Bryn is the only one who seems to have sense in this moment. And I'm just like, this is kind of weird. Rebecca, you're weird. You're a weirdo. Um, I don't know how I feel about Rebecca Minkoff. Um... This is just very, very strange to me. I don't like it. But in any case, y'all, that was the episode. It felt like a filler episode. It wasn't a whole lot going on to it. Don't forget to hit the like button on your way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see y'all for the next one. Peace.